Akio here from Inside Scan. In today's video, I'll be discussing different ethical principles you should be considering in medical ethics questions at your interviews. So for those who don't know me, my name is Akio. I'm a first year medical student from Northern Ireland studying at King's College Medical School. So in this video series, I'll be looking at the pillars of medical ethics and these pillars should be the guiding principles you should follow at interview, as well as throughout your career as a doctor when faced with medical uh, scenario, ethical scenarios in medicine. It's important to remember that medicine is a mix between a science and a humanity, and a good doctor would need elements of both disciplines to provide the best possible care to their patients. So a key piece of advice when dealing and facing a medical ethics question is that it's about developing a critical way of thinking and approaching these questions more than what you actually say in the interview. Um, they're trying to look at the way you think and the different perspectives you put on a scenario. There's not necessarily a right answer with these questions. They're just seeing your thought process. So there are four medical uh, pillars of medical ethics and a few other ethical principles you should be aware about um, when tackling these questions. And I will be giving a few mock examples in future videos. Another key idea as well to remember is when you deal with ethical scenarios and you make a decision, you should be able to defend that decision as a doctor or medical student in court. Um, so the four pillars of medical ethics is autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence and justice. So today's video, I'll be looking really at autonomy as well as informed consent and a bit on patient centeredness. So what exactly is autonomy, the first pillar of medical ethics? So autonomy is a principle that the patient has the right to make informed decisions about the direction of their care. And the assumption is that the patient has capacity and competence. And I will discuss the aspects of capacity and competence later in the video series, as it is quite heavy for this video. So the role of the doctor has shifted over the years. In the years gone by, it used to be a much more paternalistic model. So this, this basically means that the doctor would tell the patient what was going to happen to them. The patient would just follow the doctor's orders and the patient's own view of the treatment would not be even considered um, when coming up with a treatment plan. However, in the current model, the doctor and patient work in tandem in dictating the next steps in the, patient, in the patient's care. So the doctor fully informs the patient by fully explaining the treatment um, to the patient as well as the pros and cons of the treatment as well as pros and cons of alternative treatment um, uh, available to them. But the final decision on the direction of the treatment um, solely rests on the patient even if the patient's decision goes completely against the doctor's clinical judgment. And this is basically the principle of autonomy in clinical practice. So due to this shift in the doctor-patient dynamic, this idea of patient-centeredness emerges. As the name suggests, the idea was that the patient was at the centre of the care they received. The more the patient feels involved and informed in their own treatment and, and their care, so basically the more patient-centred the care was, the more likely the patient will comply and adhere to the treatment. And this results in better patient outcomes as well as a much more effective doctor-patient relationship. So the doctor-patient relationship has effectively evolved into a partnership where the doctor acts to advise and inform the patient and the patient gets a final say in deciding the direction of their care. So that's basically um, autonomy summed up. As I said, it's intricately linked to informed consent, capacity and competence. And I'll be discussing a bit more about these in future videos. Um, and as well as the other medical ethics principles. Um, thank you very much for listening. Um, Best of, best of luck for your application and please like, share and subscribe to the channel and follow at the Inside Scan on Twitter and Instagram.